Hey, it's Nick from Kinetic, and thanks for checking our series from the floor. One of our goals at Kinetic is promoting industry education. So we're putting out this series to highlight different brokers and just talk through some best practices, common mistakes, and general brokering advice. Today, I've got Nick from Merge Freight on. Nick, thanks for being on. You want to do a quick intro? Yeah, of course, man. Thank you for having me on. A uh, big fan of the show, so I appreciate you, uh, appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Uh, yeah, my name is Nick Collins. I'm the Executive Vice President over here at Merge Freight. Uh, and we are a brokerage based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Perfect. And today, like we're going to be talking through the importance of being selective in brokerage. And like you see, you see the opposite a lot. You know, you see brokers who will just work with any customer, take any freight, onboard employees, just get bodies on the floor. And a lot of times just not the best approach. So we're going to talk about a few areas where it, it it helps to be more strategic about your approach to things. And we're gonna start out with customers. So, so Nick, why don't you tell me, how do you approach a customers more strategically and that customer acquisition process? Yeah, of course, yeah. And you, know, you brought up a good point, right? Like it's the, the very tempting thing to do is to find any sort of, um, you know, any kind of customer to work with, you know, especially first starting out, right? Like. You know, either you're a new rep or you're a new, you know, brokerage going out there. You want to, you know, you spend time and resources. You know, sometimes the sales cycle is what, like three months, six months, a year, year plus. You spend all this time, you know, chasing this customer. And at the end of the day, you find out that, oh, actually their AP is not that great. Or, you know, maybe their processes that they have in place are, you know, eating up your internal resources to the point of, you know, you're having to, you know, dedicate multiple people to run an account that's just not that profitable. Um, so really trying to be on the front end, trying to vet your customers as much as possible. Uh, but, you know, also too, is, you know, a lot of it's, you know, having the conversations and making sure that you, as you build your relationship, you're telling, you, you know, these, you know, your shippers and whoever that, you know, your expectations as well as listening to theirs, you know, we want to be flexible to you know, provide good customer service, uh, but you know a lot of times you know even speaking as like a new newer brokerage, right? Like we have limited resources and have to deploy those resources uh, to be able to you know best serve our customers and you know making sure that aligns and making sure that everybody's on the same page as you as you start to land freight and land business from those customers. You know, Nick, you brought up, brought up a couple of great points in there that a lot of brokers don't think about immediately, like the accounts payable and, and your costs to serve, right? Mm -hmm. Like how much is, how much time is it going to take you guys internally to service this customer? How do you find that stuff out as early as possible? So you don't spin your wheels on a customer that's just not going to work out. Sure. I think, uh, you know, kind of back to those uh, qualification uh, conversations early on, right? You know, the typical sales cycles, you go in, you, you pound the phones, you finally get someone on the phone. Um, and you really those, you know, the first one, you tell them, maybe tell them like your services, what you offer. You know, they give you a thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, there's really the second, third, like kind of true sales conversations is really starting to, you know, to vet out their processes, ask them. You know, just, you know, most, most customers or most shippers will love to tell you how they do business. Um, and making sure that you listen to how they're doing business, you know, and somewhat being starry eyed because like you, you know, got this opportunity, but you want to make sure you have it with like a, a bit of realism. I think that's kind of the, the operational piece, um, and making sure that you guys can, you can service them and you know, you're, you, you align with, uh, with, you know, what they need. Yeah. And I like the point that you said of being able to service them, you know, because it's gotta be a fit on both ends. You know, I know a lot of brokers who will onboard whatever freight, even if they're going to struggle to service it. And not only is it like a cost to serve problem for the broker, but it ends up being a problem for the customer because they're going to get terrible service from this broker who just knows nothing about like Northeast short haul flatbed freight. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and I think that's, you know, that kind of goes and just, you have to also know your strengths too, right? That's a big, big piece of it, you know, going in. If, uh, you know, you're servicing your van brokerage and all of a sudden you go some, you know, to a, a heavy haul customer and they're like, hey, we have, you know, this, you know, need for a <laughs> heavy haul brokerage. And you're like, I can probably fake my way through it. But, you know, in the process, if you just don't have a ramp up here with them, you're going to end up ruining that relationship. Yeah, I'll admit I've done that. You know, sure, I think like, we all have, right? <laughs> yeah, I've bitten off more than I could chew, told a, told a customer I could do anything and everything. Lo and behold, 
it took me forever to figure out how to do it mm. and it went terribly i'm not saying yeah. there isn't a time and place for that sometimes but just keep it in mind yeah. um kind of like similar to customers the lanes themselves right like how do you approach those strategically again it's a real similar question but i'm wondering if there are any nuances to that yeah definitely I, I, you know I, take a look at your historic you know historic data i mean if you're a new new brokerage, I mean, you're very well well aware of you know where you're at. Usually, you find an industry, you find a a type of mode, whatever that is that you that you win on early. And, you know, it's kind of doubling down on that and finding similar um, types of, of freight, and typically those have similar lanes. Um, you know, if you're a you know, again, if you're a reefer carrier, you know, in Florida, and all of a sudden you get a you know drayage opportunity up in you know somewhere in the Pacific Northwest or something like that, like Hey, make sure you you're looking at that and vetting it. You know, maybe that doesn't line up with with what you're doing, and you you might have to price yourself out, or at least price yourself um, to know that you can build that capacity. It's all all about building capacity at the end of the day. You know, with with the different lanes, if you try to attack, you know, if you get the you know this huge bid, you know, that's nationwide. You know, maybe take a specific piece of that, and that's your first year strategy walking into it. Hey, I want to be selective and say that California is going to be our number one focus and use that first year, the first bid cycle to understand and build that capacity and then expand from there. Once that's your bed, bread and butter, move on to a different piece and you know, continue to build out and scale up uh, which, which lanes you're looking at, uh, and especially what part of the country. Yeah, I like that a lot. And do you, do you find that shippers are typically receptive to that when you go in and say, hey, like this is my strong suit, this is where I want to focus? I understand you have all this other freight, but like, I want to work with what I can do best. Yeah, I think it depends on your relationship, but typically <laughs> I found that most uh, most shippers, yeah, I mean, they would prefer that, right? They don't want you to overextend. I mean, this is a relationship business at the end of the day. They, you know, they don't want you to come in and promise in the world and burn a relationship. That's one less vendor that they have to deal with and that they can, you know, yeah, work with because you've, you know, gone in and over promised. Um, yeah, I mean, most of the time it's, you know, they are completely understanding and, if you can win them over to, you know, what you're trying to accomplish, especially if you have a good mission as a company, um, to have them, you know, essentially be on your side to help you, you know, scale, scale your business with them and scale your business in general. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Changing gears a little bit on the carrier side, how important is it to be strategic with your carrier selection? Yeah, so, I mean, I, you know, there's a couple of pieces of that, you know, compliance is a huge one there. I, I don't think we... Well, so I want to dive into the whole compliance piece on this one, but, uh, you know, outside of that, you know, that's like base level stuff is make sure you work with good carriers. Uh, but, you know, you know, the flip side of that, the other side of that, I should say, is, you know, make sure you work with carriers that are, you know, wanting to build good partnerships. That's the two pieces of theirs. You know, we have to be good partners as a, as a brokerage, meaning, hey, we have to make sure that we're paying them on time. We have to make sure that we're providing the services that helps them succeed because they're running their own small business. Um, and then, you know, also to make sure that they're, you know, willing to, uh, to represent our, our brokerage in a, in a, you know, a good light, you know, they're the eyes and ears and really the bodies on, on the ground at the shippers getting loaded, you know, they're the ones out there on the docks, strapping down loads, you know, making sure they're their, their first, um, your first line when it comes to actually dealing with your customers, they represent you. Um, so, you know, taking that with like a serious note, if, uh, you know, a carrier, acts out in a, in a negative way, you know, you have to be I don't know, at least a, either a zero tolerance policy or you have to have a really strict policy when it comes to, uh, to you know, making sure you understand that, you know, that directly reflects you. Um, so make sure that, you know, they're good behaving carriers and, you know, it's a, it's a very emotional, you know, game we play on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you know, in this industry. I mean, these drivers are out there you know, driving long hours, you know, not the you know, best conditions all the time. So, you know, it can get frustrating. I, I get frustrated driving from point A to point B. So, you know, a lot of times we have to understand that it's an emotion, emotional game, but, you know, our expectation also is that, you know, the people we hire are professional, they can, uh, they can manage those, those outlashes sometimes. Yeah. I think another interesting aspect of the carrier side of things is like making sure your freight is a good fit for their business. You know, because I know a lot of brokers who, like, they'll have that Midwest short haul carrier and they send them these blast load lists full of Pacific Northwest freight. And it's just a bunch of nonsense and it sours the relationship. So 
uh, to me, another big component to that is making sure that your, your businesses mesh well together. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point, right? Like we have to make sure that, uh, you know, yeah, there's some cool technology that's coming out and it is out at the moment that, you know, kind of helps, you know, marry some of that. Um, you know, if you're building a carrier relationship, if you're strong in Texas, you know, you know to your point, if you send their blast some stuff in the Pacific Northwest, I mean, they're going to be like, why am I even talking to these, this, this, you know, this brokerage? I mean, they're, they're not even in the, in the ball, ballpark of where I operate. So, um, yeah, no, that's a great point. Yeah. I, I think the carrier selection there's a lot of different aspects to it. I'm glad we touched on a couple of those. Um, kind of kind of moving on to the next one we have here, employee selection is another big one that, like at least in my opinion, you have to be selective about. You guys are growing and hiring right now. How do you approach it? Yeah, you know, we we want to make sure that um, that we have the right person in the seat. You know, you touched on it at the, the beginning of the podcast with, you know, you hire, hire all sorts of, you know, hire one or hire 10 to you know, save one kind of thing. Uh, that's not our approach. And I don't think it ever will be our approach. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a place um, that is, offers, you know, whatever the role is, uh, make sure it, marry or it matches up well with what, what the employee wants to do. Um, you know, it's, it's very important that, you know, especially the same sales role, you know, we want to have, give our employees opportunity to go out and you know chase the freight that they want what interests them what makes them you know get up in the morning and fires them up to come in um and you know also what we also expect the you know hard work you know a little bit of grit from our employees as well um but it's a give and take it's especially in this hiring market right now um you know it's we have to make sure that you know we're holding up our end of the bargain uh when when we're bringing on employees yeah that makes a lot of sense so as a um, as a growing brokerage, do you find that it's even more important for you guys to be strategic about, about the customer, the, the carrier, the employee selection, as opposed to a larger brokerage, or is it just different? Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah it's, it's probably a little bit different. Um, you know, we have to, you know, as a growing brokerage, we have to make sure, especially on the customer end and the carrier end, uh, you know, our, we have to make sure that you know, the back office is, is up to shape and, you know, our 30 day terms, you know, are they going to actually pay on time? Uh, we're probably a little more sensitive to that, I would imagine, but it, it still affects every level of business, you know, making sure, you know, you have to get paid in order, <laughs> in order to, you know, pay your carriers on time, you know? So, you know, it's, I think it's a little bit different as you scale and your, your appetite for risk changes. Uh, mm -hmm. But as, as a general rule, I think it's, um, you know, it's probably really, it's important no matter at what level you're at. Yeah, I agree. And there's there's some interesting tech out there to help with a lot of these things. How do you guys approach tech selection and being strategic about that? Yeah, you know, I think you know there's a lot of established players in the tech piece uh, that or the tech sector, especially in the freight freight world. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so our our main concern when when approaching a tech vendor is to see a, what they offer, make sure there's no overlap with what we already have. Because there, right now, there's a lot of overlap, and a lot of companies I think trying to find their way, uh, and you know who they want to be and what you know product they want to actually bring to the market. Um, so make sure there's no overlap. Uh, but then also, really, probably the most important piece to me is seeing how they're, um, you know, how they like to receive feedback. You know, a lot of times they're building these products for multiple different brokers or multiple different pieces in you know or you know, products in the industry want to make sure that, you know, we can give them feedback and they're going to be a strategic partner for us long-term because we're going to build a process. It's extremely expensive for us to bring on a piece of tech and just to find out it doesn't work out and then have to pivot to a new piece to service that exact same problem. Um, whereas it's a lot more, you know, advantageous for us to, you know, partner with a, you know, a strategic partner and then have, you know, them start to build out and, you know, with the expectation that they're going to be able to take that and go and, you know, sell that to another, you know, another brokers in the in the industry you know it's scratching each other's backs at the end of the day we want to help them grow so they can help us grow yeah and like particularly at a company level it's really important to build those like strategic partnerships mm -hmm. what about at, at an individual level like we've talked about all this like selection and strategy to customer acquisition and carriers how does that apply to individual reps who are growing a book of business is it exactly the same any different nuances there yeah you know i think it's um you know, 
you know, when I was, you know, when I was selling, you know, back when we were first starting out really trying like, mm -hmm. I approached it as I was starting my own business. You know, I was using the resources of the company, but um, you kind of have to, you have to look at it as, you know, you're, you're growing a, a $0 book of business, hopefully to a multi-million dollar book of business. Um, and that is your own business within it. So, you know, while, you know, maybe the exposure is not as quite as bad, uh, as far as like the you know accounting side of everything, it's yeah. at some point that's most likely going to come back and bite you. You know, they're you know they're, if you get paid out on a, a commission st structure, it's probably going to come back at some point. They're going to be, hey, are we didn't get paid for this, right? Um, so you know, I think it's I think it's you know important to again back to the vetting uh, aspect of it. Um, you know, even even especially this first couple of qualification phone calls with the customers, and then also you know on the carrier side too, make sure you you have the right carriers to, to service your customers. I mean, like that's a great perspective for folks who are growing their, growing their book of business. I hope people tune in and actually listen to that. Yeah. Um, so the way I wrap these things up is always by asking what's something that you've learned recently, because these are all about education. So Nick, what's something you've learned recently? Yeah, that's, a, that's always a, a tough one and a good one. Um, I, I think I want to take a, I feel like I'm not taking the easy way out. It doesn't seem like I'm taking the easy way out, but uh, something I you know continue to learn uh, it's, it's patience, right? You know, we are a, we're a growing business, you know, we're trying to scale right now. So it's always trying to remind myself that, you know, you know we continue to put in the hard work, it's going to come, right? It's just trying to understand or re remind ourselves, or remind myself, I should say, that, you know, just be patient, it's coming. And, uh, you know, that's always something to learn and relearn over and over again. No, I feel you. That's something people need to be reminded of periodically. I myself need to be reminded of that. Um, Anyway, like that was all great advice. I really appreciate you jumping on the show today to talk. We're intentionally keeping these short so that they're quick and digestible, but the industry is really nuanced. They're complicated subjects. There's always more to learn. Nick, if somebody wants to reach out to you, how do they do it? Yeah, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. It's uh, ncollins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S, at merge, M-E-R-G-E, dash freight, dot com. Uh, or really reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to connect and uh, help in any way I can. Perfect. All right, Nick, thanks for being on and I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more from you and the group at Mer Merch Freight. Yeah, Nick, thanks so much, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks.